What is up everybody? The Hunter GT with thehuntergt.com. That's right. Go check out the website. What is going on today? The Nocta Macro Impact Pro Package review coming at you. I get asked pretty often via email and comments on the other Nocta Macro videos. What's up with the Impact? You've done the Simplex, the Amphibio, the Gold Cruiser, the Gold Flander 2000. What about the Nocta Macro Impact Pro Package? Well, today is your day. All you potential buyers or a lot of you guys already own it. And have emailed me, hey man, I need to know how to run my machine. I, I read the manual. I don't understand it. I need that Hunter GT video. I need that Hunter GT radness. Well, here it is coming at you. I appreciate all you subscribers and viewers, you guys that email me and comment on my videos. And, you know, I couldn't do it without you guys. You guys are the heroes of the day. I really appreciate each and every one of you viewers and subscribers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This channel wouldn't be nothing. It would be absolutely nothing without you. So you guys make this happen. So what's up with the Nocta Macro Impact? Multi-frequency 5, 14, and 20 kilohertz. So very similar to the multi-cruiser and the Amphibio. It's running the same three frequencies, 5, 14, and 20. I want to say what, the multi-cruiser runs 19 or something like that. It doesn't matter. It's only one kilohertz off, right? Right? Advanced discrimination and unmasking ability. High performance and unmatched depth. Online firmware updates. Optional 2.4 gigahertz wireless headphones. 12 search modes. Three selectable target ID depth levels. Vibration, LED flashlight and backlight. Development project funded by the Scientific and Technological Research Council of Turkey. An authorized R&D center. Two year warranty like all the other not the macro stuff. Let's check out the side here. Oh, oh, let's check out the marketing here. The most powerful all around metal detector ever made, right? I don't know about that, but it is what it is. It's marketing goodness, right? Package contents, the IM28 waterproof DD coil. 28 centimeters by 18 centimeters, 11 by seven inches includes the cover. IM19 waterproof DD search coil, 19 centimeters by 10 centimeters, 7.5 by four inches includes the cover. You got some wired headphones right there, a carrying bag, rain covers, extra lower shaft, the stand, USB charger and four times double A rechargeable batteries, USB cable, optional 2.4 gigahertz wireless headphones. So what's in the pro pack? So the standard impact is $509. That's a map price. The pro pack is $594. So what $83 difference if my math is correct. For $83 you get a coil, a carrying bag, the rain covers, the extra lower shaft, the stand, and the charger. The, the normal unit only comes with the battery. So it's a pretty good deal. It's a pretty good deal for the extra $83. I definitely recommend the Pro Package. I mean, I, I realize some people are on very strict budgets or whatnot, and that is what it is, you know, if your budget's strict and you can't, you know, I can't go over $510 Hunter GT, well, just get the impact, you know, but if you got that extra $83 in your pocket, I definitely recommend the Pro Package here. It is for sure a value. It's for sure a value. Just the coil itself. The coil itself is worth the $80, the $84 or whatever it is. Um, and then you get the, the, the box or the, uh, the pouch, the coil covers, not the pouch, uh, the, what, what, the, the carrying case. Damn it, spit it out, you idiot. Um, so you get all those extra things. You know, the charger comes with it. You, you, get, you get some stuff. You get some stuff that's well worth it here. So... You want to pick one of these bad boys up? Who are you going to contact? Well, me, of course, the Hunter GT at gmail.com is my email address. I am a Nocta Macro dealer. I would love to have your business. Thank you very much. So without further ado, why don't you shut your face, the Hunter GT? Let's open up this impact and get going with this review. All right, we got it all unboxed, ready to go here, laid out, and quite a bit in this pro package, quite a bit. Carrying case is awesome in my opinion I love this it all comes up in here you got velcro straps for everything uh, for your rods up there for the detector everything's nice and tight in here the zippers come with the little hole in it so you can padlock them up if you need to for airport traveling look at that it's got like a little airport travel thing right there it's got the carrying handle on top 
And then if you flip it over to the back, look at that. It's got backpack straps on the back of it as well. So you can just throw it on your back and, you know, take it hiking if you need to. I'm a big fan of the case. I'm, I wish every detector would come with a case like this all packaged up. I'm a big fan. It's pretty cool. So we got the three rods right here, upper rod right there with the white line on it, letting you know if you've gone too far. They have the little locking quick collars on them. The two lower shafts. And if you look at the shafts, they have holes in the side of them the heck is going on hunter gt why are there holes in the side of the shaft well because you take your coil cable you run it up through there and then look on the bottom right there that is your coil connection so pretty cool pretty cool you have a hidden coil with this you don't have to worry about getting it snagged on anything not that that's usually a problem for people but uh, i'm a fan of the internal cable system no doubt so small coil right here the 7.5 by 4 and the larger 11 by seven coil right there this is the smaller one is a closed coil so no branches sticks anything like that everybody knows with the larger spider type coils that you know you do get branches and stuff in there so they give you one of each an open and closed coil a large dd and a small dd you got the literature right here the cyrox headphones comes with a quarter inch adapter right there and an eighth inch insert right there for your headphones four AA batteries from Varta and that is a very good company Varta they're internationally known good stuff right there for uh, the, the four AA batteries the rechargeable batteries the charger right here the velcro arm strap and three coil uh, bolts in there they always send you an extra one one for each and then a extra and then the USB cable is in that little package and right there as well here's the detector stand right here and just pop it on the shaft right there like that and then these two feet uh, I'm trying to do it one hand here you see how they kind of open up I can't do it one handed but you get the gist of it how they open up like that you have the front rain cover here for the unit with the you know the little visible see-through material plastic on there so there you go and the back rain cover right here as well and then the unit itself very reminiscent of a t2 f75 as far as looks and you know the way they have it up here so your headphone port is on the back on off switches on the back instead of the side a lot of people on the f75 and t2 complain oh i hit it with my hip and i turned the turn it off or the audio it went way low and i didn't even realize it you know blah 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 Dr. macro puts it right on the back right there a little dust cover for your headphone port right there and if you pop this open there are four slots for your double a batteries right here the arm cuff nice and padded right there it is slidable along this rail right here you just unscrew those two little things two on each side as you can see two right there two on each side and they slide up and down along the rail have your little locking collar here for your upper shaft and like i said it does have the coil connection thing with the little spinning collar right here for in the internal so you're going to put your you know you're going to run the cable through it, it, it it's kind of a pain in the butt, I guess, now that they think about it, but it's still pretty cool. I'm not going to knock them for it. It's still pretty cool. So you're going to have to run your cable up through there, run it through the top shaft as well, and then connect it up in there. So if you're changing coils in the field or changing shafts in the field, uh, I'm assuming it's going to be not a headache, I guess, but I guess not great. Um, forward trigger to ground balance pull the trigger back to pinpoint and there's some menu options with button presses and trigger pulls presses that we'll get into when we go over the menu setup here on the faceplate as you can see with the faceplate here nice tactile buttons you got up down right left plus minus select expert right there and on the back we have the oh, get it in frame there you idiot you have the uh, speaker port right there and you have the LED flashlight that you see on the top right there and that's all there is to the back there and you see the little trigger switch up close right there so there is the impact in a nutshell basically all of it it's very sturdy I mean it's got a great it's you know there's no wobble to it or anything like that it is quite the sturdy detector just like all Nocta macro products i mean let's be serious they make some overbuilt detectors and that's a good thing i'm not knocking them when i say overbuilt they are built like tanks and that is one of the main reasons i love Nocta macro so much so there we go that is everything that comes in the impact box all laid out for your viewing pleasure 
What do you say we put it together, run it through the old Hunter GT paces, we'll air test it, we'll recovery speed test it, we'll check it out on some small gold, and we'll do the good old nail test. Coming at you next. All right, guys, here we go with the menu display setup on the impact. Uh, one correction, I'm going to make the speaker is not on the back of the unit. It is underneath the arm cuff on bottom, underneath the battery pack there. So I made a mistake earlier when I was looking at just unboxing it real quick. I, you know, I do these on different days. So this is a complete different day than you saw the unboxing portion. I messed around with the detector, played around with it a bit and, you know, actually know it now uh, compared to when you saw that. So yeah, I thought that was the speaker on the back. So we turn it on here. It starts in disc two mode. You can hear a little bit of popping and chatter. So I'm going to leave the volume on zero for now. So we have up, down, plus, minus, select, and expert right here. We see our battery symbol down there, bottom right, mineralization meter right there, bottom right as well, ground balance, phase adjustment right there, our expert menu on the left. We have our target ID in the middle right there. Top left, we have our modes, you know, static discrimination modes, um, gin delta, and then settings right here, gain threshold disc, iron volume, tracking, brightness, vibrate, light, uh, frequency shift, factory default and save and then along the top here you see these two little lines here each one of those stands for two discrimination points on the detector so zero to 99 all the way across here each one of those stands for two lines of discrimination okay so first off we're going to start top left in our modes you can just move it around it's always going to be in mode unless you hit select and then you go down to the settings right here and you can start changing settings if you want to get out of that you just pull the trigger real quick and now you're right back up in the mode and you can see the little box up top left moving around right there and you can bump you can use up and down over left and right like that to change which one you want you hit expert it's going to be this menu over here and you can make your adjustments up and down to switch which one and then plus and minus to make your setting changes right there pull the trigger in real quick pinpoint it and you will get back out to your mode so right now we're in mode sta what does that stand for that is your static mode it means the coil does not need to be moving it is a non-motion non-motion all metal basically if you just pop a coin on the coil it's gonna make noise basically it does not the coil does not have to be moving to produce a audio tone so with that with static mode and the deep mode your ferris is going to break at 40 so it's going to be a 0 to 40 on the id scale for iron all your discrimination modes here are going to be 0 to 15 on iron so pay attention what mode you're in your break point for iron will change okay so something to keep in mind depending it, it can be a complicated detector read the manual two three four times i'm definitely going to make a mistake here in this video or miss something it's up to you as a user to read your manual and understand this detector this is just a review video i i'm human i may miss something it's not my fault it's your fault for not reading the manual okay so gin mode is the second mode over that is all metal motion based basically so static mode is is non-motion all metal gin mode is motion all metal the coil must be moving for this mode to work for you to get an audio tone basically cog conductive ground this is what's conductive salt is conductive right so basically your beach mode in my opinion um, conductive ground mode if you're on the beach this mode will ground balance quick grab so you push forward on the trigger this one will ground balance to zero all the other modes as low as they will go is 20 on the ground balance if you do a quick ground balance you can always push it forward to ground balance and then use plus and minus to make your adjustments and right here you see it goes by two tenths two tenths per button press to change the ground balance here okay so as you can see each time i push it it's going down two four six eight and then it's changing it right there okay so we'll just leave it at 90 which is the default ground balance on it so pull the trigger to get back out of that mode next over we have di2 discrimination two tone audio so 0 to 15 is going to be a low tone 16 to 99 is going to be your high tone di3 discrimination three tone mode 0 to 15 is going to be non-ferrous low tone 16 to oh what is it 66 is going to be a mid-tone and then 
67 to 99 is going to be a high tone, if I remember correctly. I'm trying to do this off the top of my head. Uh, DI4 is four tone discrimination, so 0 to 15 is a low tone. You're going to have a medium tone for 16 to 30. You are going to have a medium high tone from 17, I'm sorry, 31 to 66, and then your high tone from 67 to 99. So that's your four tone audio. That's going to be one of your deeper modes in the disc four. DI 99, exactly what it sounds like. Discrimination, 99 tones. So each ID is going to get a different tone assigned to it right there, okay? Deep mode, deepest mode on the detector right here. You can see right away the EMI starts coming in even at 70 gain. In deep mode, you're searching for deep relics, you know, urns, jars full of coins, lantern parts, big objects deep. Your ferris will be 0 to 40 in deep mode, just like in your static engine modes. It is 0 to 40. In your DI modes here, it's going to be 0 to 15, and in the VLX modes as well. We'll get over those here in a minute. Static delta, static D, S-T-A-D non-motion mode however you do get two tones of audio on this one so shallow ferrous objects will give you a low tone deep ferrous objects fringe depth targets will give you a standard tone no matter what so it only works on shallower targets same thing with gin d right here which is gin delta it's going to be your motion based all metal mode but you are going to get a low tone for iron that's sitting on the surface or you know five six inches deep fringe depth stuff down eight nine ten eleven twelve inches whatever is going to give you a normal tone it's not going to be able to tell the difference you'll have to trust the id at that point or just trust your ability with the detector vlx1 right here is going to be three tone discrimination mode but what it does it lowers the noise floor of the ground mineralization and the pops and chatters that you're going to get it, it almost stabilizes the, te the detector for you coin shooters you know if you're at an emi filled park uh very hot ground or whatever and you're getting lots of pops and chatter switch down to vlx1 if you run three tone vlx2 is four tone so it, it basically just lowers the noise level while you're detecting um if you're on changing ground that has different levels of mineralization this is the mode you want to do it'll provide weaker signals for fringe depth targets keep that in mind you know you're probably gonna walk over a 10 inch dime or something like that compared to one of the discrimination modes or the deep modes so keep that in mind on fringe depth targets it's not gonna be quite as loud as the other modes but it will quiet the detector down make it a bit less of a lightning rod in your hands so to speak okay so now depending on what mode you're in here will depend on what settings you can use and expert settings you can use some of the some of them you cannot adjust like in the deep modes here there's not going to be a threshold see how it skips right over threshold goes from gain down to disc so you will need to be in like gin mode for you to go and change the threshold there okay so gain zero to 99 basically factory default is 70 that's basically your sensitivity of the detector um, threshold right here you can change it from 99 let's listen to it here let's turn it up so we hear our threshold there all the way up to 99 the speaker was muffled it was sitting on the futon here so and then when we take it down it seems like it cuts out about 35 to 30 range it's going to cut out so expert mode real quick if you want to change that audio tone if you want to change that audio tone well first let's go let's go back here real quick let's uh raise it up so you can hear it so we'll run 50 on that so let's go over to audio tone and you can hear it here so you go from 15 all the way up To 70 so you hear how the audio tone on it sorry I'm moving it moving it around it's picking up some metal in the wall there so but you can hear oh my bad my bad I thought I was still on there so you can hear it lower and raise hopefully that's coming through hopefully that's coming through so I'm gonna remute it here remute it all right back to 
back to the settings here on the bottom left. So threshold, that's how you adjust the threshold. And then you have your audio tone here for the threshold. That's the pitch right here, the audio tone, okay? So discrimination, we can run it, see how it's bumping up every two, one, two, one, two, a new line comes in. One, two, one, two, one, two. You see a new line popping in on top there every time I hit it twice. So you can run your discrimination all the way up here to, let's see where it stops. I want to say it goes as high as you want. Yeah, it goes all the way up to 99, so that's kind of cool. So you don't, not that you would ever do that, but it's cool that they don't limit it. You know, some detectors limit how high you can go on discrimination. So read the manual as far as discrimination goes. It can help silence the detector in certain modes, but it can be counterproductive to depth on this detector at certain points. So read the manual two, three times. Make sure you're understanding how the disc works. FE volume, it goes right past that. So we don't have FE volume. Let's go to a mode that has it here. I think DI3 should allow, yeah. So FE volume, you have F0, which is off basically. F1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is the level of your iron audio. And then you have N1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can actually adjust the volume of your notch. This is going to give your notches a low tone. Usually on most detectors, a notch has no audio, right? On this one, you can go to N2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and have notch. So all your notches that you want to place in here, if you so desire, you can actually make them low tone. I do run my Amphibio with a notch with a low tone for nickels. So my nickels sound like iron, but they're blasting in my headphones. So iron comes in low and you can set your, your FE volume, you know, your F... It timed out on me so you can set your fe here for your for your iron audio and then go in here and set your notch audio as well so pretty cool pretty cool tracking right here if you want to have it automatically track the ground and try to ground balance it automatically that's what tracking does i usually run that off i gotta be honest brightness i am on c5 which is continuous so it goes to c1 right there which is low light and then five four, three, two, and zero is off. One, two, three, four, five, without the C, it's going to come on whenever you make a menu change or an ID change, basically, or, or an ID pops up. So you sweep over a dime, it's gonna pop up the, the screen for you or the brightness for you. C5 is continuous, full brightness right here. Vibrate mode from zero to five, all the way up, that's the vibration level basically so at five it's going to be the most vibration at one it's going to be a slight vibration good for you guys that are hearing impaired or if you um yeah just hearing impaired guys i'm going to say if you're underwater but do not put this detector underwater it is not waterproof need the amphibio for that um okay so then the light on the back here it, that's for the led little flashlight on the back of the unit zero is off one is on and then right here we have frequency shift right here. We have five, four, three, two, one. So five different levels of frequency shift. And then select again. I'm sorry, select down again. We have FD, factory default to the left. And if you hit right, it's save. So that's how you save your settings right here. You just hit select right there and you see it popping right here. It's going to do a little your ground balance thing shows you it's working, it's working, it's working. And boom, you're, you're saved now. So if I turn it off and turn it back on, my brightness and everything should be, you know, my, my gain settings, my disc settings, all that for each mode should be saved in, in the detector. So expert notch filter. So right here, you can set your notch wherever you want. So I can go say 34, 35, hit select. And now you see how it's bringing in notches. I can hit select again, it starts flashing. I can come over here, hit select, put a notch in there if I want as well. So these notches, like I said, if you go to FE volume down here, if you go to FE volume down here and put your N1, N5, these notches up here now are going to be a iron tone, a loud iron tone. Okay, so that's one way that you can get audio in your notches like say you want to notch out nickels and be like you know I'd like nickels to be a low tone you can you can make that happen if you want or you can just leave your notches silent like normal detectors okay um it's still I must have vibrating yeah, it's still vibrating so all right so back to expert audio tone 
Um, I discussed that. That's your pitch of your... That's the pitch of your threshold, basically, the audio tone, or your VCO tone. That is going to be the pitch of the VCO tone or your threshold. Tone break is going to be where, like, remember I was in, let's go here, D3. So my tone break in D3 was 0 to 15, right? I can change that tone, that tone break, wherever I want to set it here on this one, hit select, and now it goes to my golden on Ferris, my second one, and I can select that tone break as well. Okay, so if I go to D4 here, and now I go to tone break, now you see I have Ferris, gold, non-Ferris, and then non-Ferris all the way up here, so each time I <laughs> go back, Oh, I, sw I switched down. So you got to be careful with this detector, guys. It's going to, if you bump out of the, uh, I'm, I'm making mistakes, I'm going to leave it on here. I'm going to leave it on here. So you got to be careful. Don't let it time out. Or else, so tone break right there. So there it is. So you can see I can, I can set my gold Ferris one that starts from 30. If I hit select, it bumps back up to the next one. I can adjust that one that started at 66. Remember, four tone mode had a zero to 15 for the low tone. It had a 16 or 17 to 30 for the gold non-ferrous. And then for the ferrous, gold non-ferrous from 30, I can't remember what, what is off the top of my head. Um, 16 to 30 for the low mid-tone or the mid-tone. 31 to 66 for the mid-tone. So read the manual. Read the manual, okay? I think you guys can wrap your head around how that works uh, for the tone break. I sat intelligent self-adjusting threshold. This will make your threshold smoother. You will lose depth if this is all the way up to 10. I usually run it off. I don't run all metal very often or anything like that. I don't see the purpose of it unless I'm, you know, at a gold claim or something like that, which I wouldn't be using this detector, honestly. Um, and then we have frequency shift, so 14, 20 kilohertz, 5 kilohertz right there on the frequency. So that is pretty much everything on this in a nutshell other than a trigger combination. So if I pull the trigger, all right, if I pull the trigger, that's pinpoint, push it forward, it's ground balance. But if I pull the trigger and hit right here, you see that? I can do standard and normal ID. Standard is going to give you a different ID for your three frequencies. So five kilohertz, 14 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz, they're all gonna have different IDs, okay? If I want to have them all have the same ID, which will be the 14 kilohertz mode, it's gonna run 14 kilohertz ID on both, on all three, um, frequencies so both 5 kilohertz and 20 kilohertz are going to read the same ids as 14 that's how i would run it personally is normal i don't want to remember three different id sets um from the standard mode I, I see no reason for that so some guys might want to do that i run it normal um if i pull the trigger and go up here i have high low intermediate okay this is your depth id so if you're on low only fringe depth targets are going to give you an ID. If you are on intermediate, it, it's going to tighten. It tightens up the ID, basically. So fringe depth targets are going to be have a better ID. And then on high, fringe depth targets are going to have the greatest ID. But you, you, they're going to, you know, fringe depth targets are always going to be bouncy. So I would just leave this on intermediate myself and just run it like that, basically. Um, I don't know how much it really changes. I haven't really tested it on the Amphibio too much in the field. I'm probably never going to test it on this one too much in the field either, but you can adjust how tight the IDs come in for targets with, with that right there. So it's pulling the trigger and up right here. And then pulling the trigger and down, we see we can go to 10 and off. This is going to be your wireless channels right here if you connect wireless headphones to it. And then in the gin and delta modes, if you pull the trigger and go left, it's going to give you a boost option. Read the manual. There's different levels of boost you can set. I want to say you have to be restarting the detector to get into that menu. I'm not going to do it right here for the sake of time. Um, but there is a boost audio option by pulling the trigger and going left when you are in the, let's see here, in the gin and static mode. So let's see. Yeah, there we go. Boost 
So you can boost the audio, boost one, boost two, boost three, boost four, boost five. So you don't have to restart it for that, my bad. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the detector in a nutshell. So I know I kind of ran through it pretty quick. Read your manual. I mean, I'm already at 20 minutes on this section, so I guess it's not really quick, but there's a lot to cover on this, on this detector. I'm trying to get it all in. That's enough of that. Let's go on to the next thing, which is gonna be air testing, and then we'll do some recovery speed and the nail test coming up next. All right, here we go in three tone mode. It's cranked all the way up to 99. And you can hear it is popping, spitting, farting, chatting at me. It's screaming at me, hey man, what am I doing at 99? So 14 kilohertz mode, I'm not gonna do five and 20. I'm just gonna run 14 kilohertz mode. Small gold ring, 10K gold ring, very thin and small. I mean, that's as thick as it is right there. It's a super thin gold ring. Eagle button, silver dime, buffalo nickel, silver quarter, silver half dollar, and a lead bullet right there. So as we can hear, it is really popping and spitting. I'm in disc three mode, which is actually one of the more shallow modes. You can get even better results in deep mode or disc four, but they hate EMI. They just, those modes hate EMI. Disc three is actually the best mode for heavy EMI. So that's what we're using here. So keep in mind, you can actually get better results than what I'm gonna show you here if you were in zero EMI and in one of the other modes. But we're getting hits out to about 11 inches, 11 and a half. About 11 and a half on that thin gold ring before you lose it in the EMI. Eagle button here. We're getting that to about 10 and a half before we lose it. Silver dime, there's the high tone we all love. Getting that out to about 10 inches before we lose it. Buffalo nickel. We're getting that clear out to a foot. Definitely repeatable at a foot. At 13, I'm getting hits. Well, I think we're going to start to lose it to EMI after that. Silver quarter. Getting that out to about 10 and a half, 11 before we lose it. Big old half dollar right there. Walking half dollar. We're getting that out to about 12 before we lose it. And the lead bullet right here for you relic hunters. A three ringer Civil War bullet. We're getting that out to about 11 or 12 or so before we start to lose it to the EMI. So you will lose it to the EMI, but listen, like even the small button at nine, 10 inches. See how it stops the EMI and produces the signal pretty clearly? You can still hear some scratch from the EMI, but a lot of detectors at this depth, you're gonna lose it to the EMI. And this almost like overrides it, which is pretty neat. Not too many detectors do that. Pretty neat, pretty neat. So there you go. Keep in mind, like I said, you will get better results in DI4, DI99, deep mode, out in the middle of nowhere, away from computers, Wi-Fi. I'm sitting in my room right now with a computer running behind me and all that, but I don't mind it. I like testing in EMI heavy scenarios like that, and the detector actually performs pretty good in the EMI uh, with the with the results of the air test. Why do I do air testing? Because air testing is a best case scenario compared to soil tests. I don't care about other people's soil. I only care about my soil. Um, and you should not care about my soil. You should only care about your soil. So that's why I don't do test beds. I don't, when I see other people doing a test bed, how deep a detector goes, I just turn it off. I, I don't care because I know that's not my soil and it's not the type of conditions I'm gonna be hunting. That's why I always do hair, air tests, um, just to wrap your head around that. So let's move on and go do some recovery speed, some nail testing and see how it does on some small gold as well. All right, let's check the small gold. There is the 0.3 gram picker right there, three tenths of a gram. And there is the tiny, tiny little piece that doesn't even register on the scale right there. So 
let's see how they do. 20 kilohertz mode, all metal. No problem on that one at all. And it is hitting that, but you got to really scrub it. Definitely not the Gold Finder or the Gold Cruiser. This is quite a large coil for gold prospecting as well. I'm sure that small coil will do much better. But it does hit it. We know if this hits it, that the small coil is definitely going to hit it. So, alright, let's check out recovery speed. Alright, little recovery speed test now. We got three silver dimes sitting right there. One, two, three. And they are right at coil width apart, so it's a perfect spacing for them. Here we are, we're in DI3. Blazing fast. Let's go to DI2. Blazing fast. Blazing fast. On this, it doesn't matter what mode you're in. It's it's bonkers fast. Bonkers fast. All right, let's check out the nail test. See what's up. All right, we're trying a small coil on Monty's nail board test, only on the number two spot. Because in the next section, you're going to see the big 11 inch DD pass on number one. Four of four, and then do like two of four on the number two spot. So it passed like with a six of eight, I'd say, something like that. So I wanted to check the small coil as well. DI3. There's the iron sound right there. There's the coin. It does struggle still with the down the barrel. Let's turn the iron volume down. There we go. Now it's really coming through. You can hear that little pop. Is it as good as this way? No. But you're still hearing it. So it is an 8 of 8 with a small coil. I just had to test it. My brain wouldn't let me relax. So there we go. All right, here we go with the nail test. I am in DI3. That's what the iron sounds like. A little pop here and there. But you can hear for the most part it is all iron. You get a little chirp of a high tone here and there. Put that down, grab this Indian head penny, pop it right in the middle there, and let's check the difference. I'm definitely hitting it. hitting it all directions so far. So, definitely hitting it four of four that way. Let's bump it over here. Yeah, get it on the circle. I can't get it on the circle. There we go. All right, let's try it again. missing it there. That's just iron tone. So it does not like the long down the barrel test.
definitely likes it all the other directions. So I'd say that's like eh, six of eight, seven of eight as far as the iron goes. Let's let's bump it over to DI2 real quick. See how that does. And even it, it doesn't like that either. So down the barrel, it's not hitting it down the barrel, but it's hitting pretty much. And that's a tough test for a lot of detectors down the barrel. Uh, let me turn it off. So there we go. So that is it. It passes six of eight on Monty's test with the large coil. I'm not going to do the small coil. Um, it's a DD, so it'll probably do much better, but I'm still not sure if it'll hit that down the barrel test or not. Um, yeah, I just don't know. So, lovely detector. I am a big fan of this here impact. Sorry for my oil spotted floor. We got, you know, cars that leak around here. Uh, yeah, it, it's a pretty good detector. It, I'm quite impressed with it. Ergonomics are good. Build quality is phenomenal. You know, it's it's up there for me. It's up there for me. I really, really enjoy this detector, the way the menu sets up, the options, the features. I am a huge fan, honestly. It takes a lot from the Amphibio, and obviously they took a page out of the T2 S75 book as far as looks go, which, you know, my two favorite detectors are the T2 and the Amphibio. So this is kind of like a molding of them both. And yeah, I am quite thrilled to own this detector. This is not one I will be getting rid of anytime soon. That is for sure. Big fan. Big fan. Hope you enjoy this video. The Hunter GT signing off. I will see you on the next video.